Raul, you have you heard about this uh, glitter bombing thing that's going on? No, I've, I've have heard legends of people in splash wells putting glitter. And, so uh, this is a this is a real fucking thing going on down there. Oh no no no! I've heard of people <laughs> in Ocean City and in Florida. I, I heard about it in Florida like ten years ago, and then I, I heard about it. Um, I, I These guys know. winning, Nick. Anthony, so what, from what I've just, you know, I've recently come across some, some disturbing news that pissed me off. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm not happy about it, but some, from what I hear, they're making frozen ice balls with glitter inside and they, they throw one over or throw a few over. And, you know, obviously as the ice ball melts, the glitter gets released and creates some sort of sardine ball glitter scale you know, slick going down. And how did it start out? Like, what was the origin story? Too much alcohol. Really? <laughs> okay. Because if God wanted us to have fiberglass boats, he would have given us fiberglass trees. It's, it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit, as yeah. far as if I can remember uh -huh. correctly. <laughs> Welcome to the State of Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm Nick Rulo. I'm joined with me, Anthony Pino with Hooked Optics and Captain of the Blood Money. Tonight, our guest, we have Raul Gonzalez, Captain of the Bar South, and Shay Danzig, uh, first mate aboard the Marlin Darlin, uh, and both owners and creators of Easy Bait Rigging. Uh, welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having us. So, uh, yeah, tell us, you know, why don't you go and just kind of tell us who you are, but, uh, how you got into the industry and should introduce yourself. Well, I started out fishing at an early age. I was lucky. My grandfather got me into it and, and a summer job through high school, I started working at tackle shops and started meeting people along the way. And then once I got to college, I started working at a tackle shop on the weekends and a charter boat captain was nice enough to give me an opportunity to, to work on his boat. And he told me he would book his charters around my college schedule and I, I did that. I worked for West Pole on a CV play at Cranon and Key Biscayne for a couple of seasons. And then from there, you know, your name gets out. And I fished for Frank Godwin, and fished for Mike Puller. And then I got, you know, once you, once you build up the repertoire from there, then the private boats start to, you know, find out about you. And I was lucky enough to meet Dr. Joy and Neil Preston on the Joy Ride. And that was my first real private job. Did that for a few years, and I actually got to run that, but it was a 46 person for a year. And um, then I met Chester Sims on the Lights Out, and we had an awesome career together. You know, I fished with him for six years. And we you pillaged things. Ocean City for like four <laughs> years in a row. <laughs> Took everybody's money is what happened. <laughs> yeah, 2013 and 2015, we, we won $2.4 million. We're very blessed. And we did all that with O-rings. We were using O-rings, and we got, we're very lucky with O-rings. And then um, I got the opportunity to run the Bar South with Shay or, and with on, on the Rob. Rob Go there. There. Yeah. I was on the Marlin Darn at that time. We were building a new boat, and we were down. And I'd worked in the Bar South before that, friends with everybody, friends with Raul. So my boss was nice and let me go fish the season with them. In Ocean City, just, well, we didn't have much going on. So Shay was really good with the swivels. And I fished with him a handful of times on the Marlin Darlin. And I, I had issues snapping on the swivels. And then at the end of, you know, the bait change, you'd have to cut the swivel off. And, and it just didn't seem like a good idea to me. And, and Rob Gothier was really adamant about us fishing that season with the swivels. So it just occurred to me, I'm like, why don't we just try to dip a, a, a bigger swivel in a rubber coating and, and see if it'll hold. And, and it's just... It just makes a lot of sense, you know, and, and that's and that's how we came up with the idea, and, and that's how we're. I think we uh, started talking about it in Florida on our drive to Ocean City, maybe around Jacksonville, and I think by uh, maybe by South Carolina somewhere. We kind of got the way we can still make them to this day. Kinda Did you guys have a lot of ch challenges with uh, like use the right sort of rubber that you use with the swivels? Like I Luckily, remember, I remember you saying that it took a while we got lucky and then we tried two different things and, and and one definitely has been working out the best you know it's definitely labor intensive but um 
it, it's definitely given us the best product as far as durability and, and ease of penetration use. Got it. Gotcha. And explain uh, to you know somebody that doesn't you know know what your swivels are. You know how would you tell them uh, you know the the pros and pros to it. So when I use first with the swivels. Um, every hook we use, every different style of fishing we did, we had to have a different swivel. So I had like a toolbox and it had fifty dividers in it. I keep a hook in it, and a label it might have been like an eight o nine o pitch bait thing, something. And each swivel I'd have a, each hook I'd have a different swivel. Maybe the barb on the, the machine that made the hook would come out differently. So that swivel might not work and hard. You try to snap it onto a bait, you couldn't, very difficult to snap it on, you know? And the amount of uh, quantity and variety that we needed was incredible. I would have to snap them on before I rig the bait, a lot of waste with leaders and whatnot. So we wanted to get a way that we could snap one swivel into a lot more different hooks. And this way you can snap all those op- more options into one swivel. And what didn't make sense was it pinched the barb too. So you, in that process of snapping the swivel on, now your barb, what, what keeps the hook in the fish, is, is pinched down, you know. So that fish jumps or something like that, there's a higher probability of the hook, you know, coming out. Gosh, that, I'd, I'd had the same – I'd had the idea at some point to, to – to, dip them like that and i never really said anything to anybody but you guys figured it out and i think it's amazing it's i mean i just it's the only way to roll now you know i think no nah, that's the name easy <laughs> my buddy that showed me the first time i'm on there i fish with them i want my good friends come with me and he could snap them on so easy and it bothered me that he was so much better at it than me i'd wake up early hour ahead just yeah yeah to, to he, keep up with my buddy because i know he could do it and i couldn't it's like man yeah, I, rem- I, I remember Wait, fishing with a jt and taylor beckford one day on the chasing tails in costa rica and they were just so they could use the the cutters and clip them on yeah, there like was they could do, that and was, I was like, my other buddy was the same with me to roll that other yeah. guy he was like that and i was me. like <laughs> how do you do, i was like how do you do that and you know and i could never figure out even how to how to do it and then by that time you know for us we were slipping an o-ring using an oversized swivel and slipping an o-ring over a hook but you guys kind of took it all well then it's off. one more step and then yeah, that exactly you can slide up onto the bar you know it's yeah. kind of no, I, we did I, it for I, the simplicity well not but then once we did it then we started finding some other advantages of it too it seemed like maybe the resistance of the rubber on it like the way i rig my baits they almost never foul before it's foul like you know a handful of baits a day i might I still foul some but like that number yeah. went way down and then we figured out the barb thing and found a lot more advantages after using yeah. it. What is it? So you guys both work, have full-time jobs. Raul, you're the captain of the Bar South, and, and Shay, you're the maid on the, maid on the Marlin Darlin'. You guys both fish very, very heavy schedules in, in the DR and 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 Raul when you come up to Maryland and when you guys fish in South Florida. What it, how What's it like juggling the two? Because you guys, I mean, anytime I order something from you guys online, I like get a text from our wool saying, Hey, you want to do this or you want to do this? I think the, the customer service is pretty solid considering, you know, you have, you both have full, full time jobs, you know? Definitely hard. You get, yeah. also get feedback from people like you just said, a lot of stores like, man, you actually get your product and during COVID. Yeah. We're going to get stuff now. I'm able to keep up, but it's definitely a struggle. Well, the biggest thing yeah. is thinking of the future. You know, you got to think of like the long term thing, you know, like these jobs come and go. So you, I, I think of this being, not so much just my retirement, but, you know, something that'll, you know, a small piece of that. So I, I try definitely is a, a, a labor of love, you know, you definitely got to find time at the end of a big day of fishing, you know, to package, put all the package together, print out the label and then go to the post office. But at the end, you got to think of the big picture, you know, what, what's going to keep you going financially stable in the future. It's like a rewarding, yeah, I, thing, but it's like a hobby that's able to benefit you. So it's nice to have something that it's still fishing related. We all yeah. obviously enjoy fishing. Might not be the most fun work, but it's something yeah. in it that you know is better. Yeah, for you. and you know, I, I mean, hard. Nick, do you think of life after fishing? Because I mean, I've, we're all kind of not not as young as we used to be. I mean, do you guys think? Do you guys think about that? Because I like, I do. I mean, I do. Yeah. I, do. I try everything. I read. Every day I try to, you know, because I, I grew up charter fish and I would see the older mates, the older captains, and, you know, it, it, it takes a toll on your body and your family. And that first charter captain I had, he told me, he was like, listen, if you want the white picket fence and the family and everything, he's like, you know, you got to get out now. And I was like, oh, I can't be like that, you know, but it, yeah. you look at the, you know, people in the relationship, it, it, it definitely is hard. Yeah. 
What did uh what did Bubba Carter say to us, Nick? He said this this job takes more than it gives to you. Yeah. I think is that's exactly what he said. And you gotta you know, love- I mean, I don't I don't always agree with that, but there are some pretty massive sacrifices that and you know, living, you know, the traveling and you know, even when you're not traveling, like here in Ocean City, I feel like my girlfriend, like during the tournaments, I'm just on the phone all day after I'm fishing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like so, but it it you know, but beyond that like there's not like you know some of the some great jobs have like retirement and benefits but those a lot of these jobs don't last that long you know where you're in them for for 10 15 20 years so it's kind of like you gotta i think you gotta have some foresight to have something else going on you know that that maybe not is substantial now but maybe in the future might be you know you're gonna fish when you want because you're still gonna fish but if yeah. You get yeah, yeah. Retiring to be fishing. And, I mean, when I want to. I mean, I, yeah, I don't think any of us would change where we are right now. But you know, you do see that, like you said, Raul, like looking down the down the line. You know, look or look around. You're like, man, I just want to. There's going to be a time when I don't want to. You know, get up at three thirty in the morning, run ninety miles to maybe catch one white marlin. That quality, my guys time. Was, all about quality time. Quality <laughs> time. Uh, so. No, yeah, the first, they, that first private boat, you, he told me, he's like, think of every private job like a wave. You know, you ride the wave, you enjoy it, but you understand that at the end of that wave, there's a beach. You know, yeah, yeah. You know there's no ride that goes forever. Yeah. You know, you, 10 years in this industry is like 100 years in dog years. You know, it's, it's rare. It's definitely yeah. rare. It's quite what, the analogy, uh, Raul. What's the... <laughs> 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 hey, guys, quick reminder. Bill Fisker will be at the Miami Boat Show next week. Come by, check us out. We'll be upstairs at the retail section, booth 6115. Hope to see you guys there. What's the growth right now for Easy Bait Rigging? I mean, is there, do you guys see yourself expanding more, maybe getting a warehouse, an office, hiring more people? Uh, what's is it still just you two? Like? Yeah. Yes, sir. We, we have a couple dippers, but as far as uh, packaging and shipping, yep, it's just the two of us and um yeah we're trying to expand into more tackle stores the whole thing is keeping the the boats that fish fishing with our product you know putting a bunch of product in our store and making money it it, yeah that's great but it's more important for us to have the big, big name boats and the people in all these locations fishing with our swivels that's the biggest compliment when you go to the bait rigging table and i bring my values up and i see someone else rigging with my swivel it's you know it's that's, or it's even yeah. better when you don't even know who that person is you're like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> Pretty cool walk the dock. You see the people using your stuff. Yeah, he said you don't know. Now it's in more stores. They buy it. Before we used to know everyone that had it because it was all direct. Yeah. Now the stores we don't know. And like some days in Dominican, and one day I started writing down like all the good days on boats that do had it. And there was days yeah. there was a, almost 100 fish caught on boats just using our stuff. Yeah. Pretty cool. Anything like all those new Marlin. At some point, my hand touched. They were all his hand touched. So <laughs> do that. Pretty sweet. Yeah. No, and it's, I mean, we're all kind of a part of a brand. So it's definitely, I mean, I'm sure it's humbling, like you said, to see, you know, big name guys and people that you've never even seen before using your product, you know? Yeah. I'm asking how they like it too, and they don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's honest, you know, it's honest <laughs> feedback and they like it. I did yeah. that. I did that once. I was like, nice sunglasses. And he was like, oh man, that's, yeah, this, this new company. And I was like, I was wearing the same sunglasses and I was, <laughs> it was, it was cool to run in and they bought it from my brother's optical store. And I was like, uh, he said, you know, it's great when people say great things about, about your products or your service, you know, just because, and they don't even know if they're talking to somebody who's got something to do with it. So, I mean, it can go the other way. It can go the other way around too. <laughs> yeah. Definitely had that a couple of times, but good to ask you to get good feedback. Your buddies don't always tell you that like they don't tell you something that they just like, they'll just say good things. Yeah. People you don't know. Yeah. No, what everyone's thinking. So, it's all part of the process. You got to take the good with the bad, you know, and then if you don't get that negative impact or, or input and you're not in the field, then you'll never know how to improve your product. Yeah. I, I, I learned something uh, from my uncle at Squid Nation. He, I always, he would go anywhere and fish a tournament, you know, even if he wasn't sponsoring it or anything like that. And he would just, but he'd build relationships and people knew who he was walking down the dock anywhere, you know? And I think it it's, it's done really well for him to be like, you know, like everybody knows who he is. You can go up to him and talk to him and say, Hey, you know, this is really working great or your shit's falling apart or something like that, you know, but it, it's, it's, huh? 
Customer's always right. It works yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I for them, what they need. Yeah, so I, I just find it really interesting to just, like you guys said, like to always be on the dock and doing or in where where the, the action is, you know, and I think it's important. That's the coolest thing about the relationship, Shay, and I have the partnership is that he is in the Southern Hemisphere. He does the Caribbean and Dominican, and then I get to go up to the Mid-Atlantic, you know, so we yeah. kind of get both areas pretty covered you know mm-hmm. definitely a good part of it what uh how far how far you got swivels going across to other countries and stuff what's the furthest there you guys are sending product texas a lot to texas now uh, a lot a lot of our stuff gets shipped here and then the people take it to where they go you know yeah we people take it all over but uh we don't have like the international stores but not um costa rica sells some but most of it's here then the boats take it yeah yeah Cause it's not a huge, like you, it's not a huge, you could buy freaking 8,000 of them and take up a little box, you know, in your pocket. Yeah. So kind of makes, <laughs> kind of makes it easy. No, Florida, Florida is a huge part of it. You know, that in the mid Atlantic, I would say probably our number, number one, the sailfish scene in, in Florida and the mid Atlantic is definitely yeah. our number one sales right now. And then, like you said, you, it's hard to tell what she was saying. It's hard to tell. Who takes, you know, a couple thousand down to Costa Rica, you know, yeah. once you mail it to their house, you don't know where it's going. How's the uh, online, like, do you do you consider it a big, a big part of your operation being online? Yeah, no, it definitely, it, it definitely helps. But, um, it, it, you, you know, with your product, the, the biggest seller is going to be the store, you know, if you, yeah, yeah. if you, if you want to move your product at first, we really wanted to sell it direct to consumer. But um, you got to have your product in the brick and mortar because that's where the people are going to go that are going to fish on the weekends and they're going to go to the tackle store and they're going to they're going to want to see the product, touch it. You know, fishermen are we're old, we're old school. You know, we like to, to look at it, look at the bag, you know, look at the swivel, hold it. Yeah. You know? That was the hardest thing about our product introducing it is. We had to give a bunch away. We, and during the White Marlin Open, we would give a dozen, you know, a dozen packs so you could rig a dozen values. That way, you know, everybody can see it. You know, it's definitely hard to get people to switch over for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like a, yeah, we're definitely set in our ways when it yeah. comes to that. Like at every, every aspect of it, you know, like I, I talk to people about, you know, cert, they're like, well, I just, I'm just like a Maui gym guy. I'm like, well, just, just maybe try this, you know, and just see what happens. And, you know, for the most part, you know, you get a positive response. I, I, I've been fortunate or we've been fortunate too. Yeah, I'm waiting. I can't wait for my uh my pair coming my way. Coming, I gotta get. We'll get you a pair before. And but uh, wait, wait, you can't give him one, and not me. That's not fair. I, know. I, I did. I did fucking promise you a pair like last year too. It's all good. It's all good. Amber, Amber, Amber. I have them on their way. <laughs> so, how, but how did your glasses didn't come about. What, um, you know, the biggest part of it was uh, a big company called Luxottica in Italy bought. Costa Del Mar and their Lixotica is a really giant corporation, right? And Costa Del Mar is a huge company, but it wasn't it like not a corporation. So they, when that happened, it kind of changed relationships with their retailers and stuff like that. And, you know, we started, my, my family's been in the optical business. My brother's got the store down in Ocean City and my parents have a, a, another two in some other towns, Centerville and East and close to, close to Ocean City. And, um, we kind of just saw the saw the opportunity, and my mom being uh, kind of the the person to push everything along. She was like, when COVID came, she she freaked out. Like the retail, we were never gonna go back in the brick and mortar retailing anymore. So she just kind of when 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 it seems like a uh, a pattern in my family when things start to go wrong, you just kind of take a, n- another risk. Which I commend my my mom for. So um, so. We wanted to get into the to the to the wholesale business and the you know building a brand and you know we were my brother my dad and I are fishermen so we just kind of and we saw the space open up in in the you know the fishing fishing sunglass place and it's become you know it's a dog fight right now but you know we'll hopefully come out on top it's a busy busy space but you know that's kind of how it came we just started the build build through you know our little community there in Ocean City that you guys know well and kind of starting to go starting to build retailers we just started at uh grand slam and in and, and riviera beach uh 
That's awesome. Open that account there. And then we have the accounts in uh, Costa Rica, Cabo, um, Puerto Rico, and uh, Qatar. Qatar. I think it's Qatar. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then some other retailers, Atlantic and Ocean City. And uh, so we're starting, you know, it's, it's, it's a grind like you guys know. So, but just using the kind of, I, you know, just trying to get people to, to change their ways a little bit like you guys did. It's kind of a, it's, it's a, it's a slow, I feel like if we can get people to buy our sunglasses, once we can kind of see a lot of fit, a lot of glasses on, in, in, uh, on faces around tournaments and stuff like that. I think the hardest thing is going to be to get the, get the, get the fishermen mm-hmm. to wear them. And then you know, like change once they change. No, we don't. Yeah, product. we don't like, yeah. So. Good product once they know it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then stay loyal. So as long as it, then once we can kind of keep up with the customer, you know, the customer service, which I think is important in this industry, you know, then we can kind of hopefully expand beyond that. But right now the focus is on the fishing industry and just getting them to see what, what I get to see, you know, and that's fishes. glass and plastic lenses, glass and poly polycarbonate. We have a, a model card uh, called Thermoforce, which is our polycarb lens, which is, pretty you know i would recommend it for mates that more so than captains because you know you get swivel you know get swivels and you know you drop them stuff like that where as i feel like up on the bridge we don't have to deal with that as much and you know i'm a i'm a big fan of the glass lenses when we're up and i'm a big amber guy too raul i know a lot of what nick what color lenses do you wear black 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 blue so. no just black like just no, black yeah no blue no tint just black yeah how about you shay amber black solid. amber I got gotcha. you. Do you do you switch for for like overcast days with the amber, or do you and then or really blue water? You go to the black, or do you just kind of? No, I used to use the black more, and I've had a pair of ambers I've liked for a while. And yeah. at least maybe different people's eyes it might matter, but with my eyes, the ambers. Are yeah, so Raul, well, you're the level where you're at. So in the cockpit, I would wear the the black, uh-huh. and I feel like that cuts the glare better. But when you're up higher in the tower or the bridge, looking down. I feel like the amber makes the darker colors like a, it's, a fish. I, yeah, I feel like the amber offers more of a contrast. So, you know, we're looking at, you know, out there, we're pretty much looking at different shades of blue, you know, whether it be green, blue or all the way to deep blue. And then you see that sea of fish in the water with the big with the peck fins lit up all blue and, and black and you're you're di- looking at different shades and i feel like the amber gives you you can kind of spot that difference a bit, maybe a little bit more than than with the uh with the blue or black lens uh, definitely doesn't cut the glare the same though I, I know in the cockpit though that that blue black is definitely uh it definitely cuts the glare better for sure yeah. and help you see that you know that one dorsal fin you know behind the bait or something like that yeah, Nick. Nick, how's it juggling? Juggling the billfish stuff with the, the three boats that you work on. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You're very, I mean, you're it's very a lot. In, in demand. Doesn't have much time to hang out with me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to get Shay some shirts, man. <laughs> but no, it's 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 good. It's a lot. I mean, the company's you know growing super fast right now. Uh, growing pains for sure, but you got to have it. I think uh, to grow. Yeah. So and. Right now, things are a little more hectic than normal. We got our first boat show, uh, Miami Boat Show, in a couple weeks. Uh, so that'll be... There? What's that? You guys got a booth for the Miami Boat Show? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so that'll be... <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hectic, and I, 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 I'm kind of... You know, what, a week, a week right before the challenge? Yeah, so... Oh, uh, <laughs> plenty of time. <laughs> plenty of time. So, yeah, that'll be... Uh, how How really is he... How are your companies received by the people you guys work for? Are they they on board and they're about it, or you know they yeah, kind of work. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, hard. that's true. Or they yeah. want to buy into it, but I tell them I'm not. I'm only making pennies. I'm not going to split pennies with them. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're both big supporters of us and happy for us and help anyway. Yeah, yeah. they're both, both very nice people to work for. Yeah. How about you, Nikki? Do you? I mean, I know your your new job is kind of new. Do you even talk to your boss about it? Yeah, actually, I. Just like last week, I gave the the boss lady, I gave her a nice little pink, you know, billfish outfit. And I gave the boss, you know, a couple of hats and shirts and stuff. And he loved it. And no, they want to, you know, do an order and stuff. So it's, it's good. cool when they it. can be, they can be a part of it, you know, or they can at least encouraging. My people are super encouraging, you know, and they most, fly. Most of the people fl- are pretty cool in this industry. Yeah. People yeah. I mean, I think the cool thing about this industry is a lot of their, their, a lot of self-made people 
you know, and, you know, I think like you get to the, the big yachts and the people think that they're kind of above, above the, the crews where, you know, in sport fish boats, you still sleep. If you're all crashing on the boat. Everybody's kind of sleeping in the similar type bed. There's no, there's no like crew on most sport fish boats, you know, yeah, there's no, terrible. yeah, you, you kind of got to get along with the people where it ain't going to work. So pretty interesting. Definitely un- unique. Yeah, you can kind of be on. It's kind of cool, and you can. Do you guys feel like you learn a little bit from the owners? You know, being, you know, you get you develop pretty. I mean, Raul, you you've been on the Bar South for a while now, and Shay, you've been on the in the Marlin Darling for a while now too, right? Yeah, I think almost seven years now. Yeah, so like, I mean, do you do you feel like you guys learn business and life stuff from your bosses a little bit? Oh yeah, pick your yeah. brain as much as possible, and just, they're good examples. You know? Yeah. I'd, I definitely always try to ask every person I fished with as, as far as an owner is, is what they do and how they got to that point. Yeah. And you, you, like you said, financially you learn like they all have, you know, stocks in common, you know, they have some kind of plan in the, in the future. Mm-hmm. You know? and it, it, it's definitely very insightful for sure. Yeah. Well, the, I, I have a very, yeah, that, the same way I, we have two owners on the boat and one of them is like more like a like a a good friend or a brother where the other one's a like so we have a i learned a lot from him kind of in different like less of a mentor type thing more of a like a we he kind of talks to me on the same level and then the other guy bill is he's just i he i learn a lot for like i i actually go to him and be like hey what do you think about this or that or you know certain things i think it's i it's cool to get two perspectives like that and but I, I definitely learn a lot off of both of them and honestly everybody on my boat i'm fortunate they're they're all kind of their own business owners and um all of our anglers i learn a lot from i think it's it's cool to be able to relate to somebody with something like fishing and you know because if we were typical people in their company making the sort of mo- the same sort of money we'd probably be you know six or eight steps away from actually talking to them you know where know your name. you know yeah they might not even know your name you know yeah. They were, you know, now you just get phone calls from them five times a day wondering about the weather or how the fishing is. You know? part, of the, part of the family going to birthdays. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's a cool privilege kind of perspective that we get to. And, you know, if you play it right, you can really learn a lot from these guys. I think it's kind of special to, to be able to have that. Absolutely. Very blessed. And Very. then you get the party with Rob all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Fun too. <laughs> Not looking forward to this summer. <laughs> what's uh, what's the plan? Uh, well, the going in deep, you know, Larry passed away, yeah, you know, and uh, he was always the head one to throw all the parties there on the dock. So ah, yeah, <laughs> I can see, I can already see a little glimmer in his eye. You're gonna need to get a bigger boat to have the parties like they had, though. Uh, no. <laughs> oh no 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 no! <laughs> I like the fun size. Yeah, me too. Uh, Hot. it's crazy you look around ocean city and you see these 70 80 footers and i'm like i'll just find on what i got right here when are they going to redo the docks there to make room for all these 70 and 80 footers i don't know hopefully i i would assume relatively soon you know next couple of years i've heard it's coming yeah they're they're running out of space i I don't know for sure but you'd have to think they did they are because they're definitely running out of space oh when they built that marina you know Big boat was a sixty foot boat. They, I, what I, I know for a fact somebody was like, I can't believe you're building this many big slips. You're never gonna fill them, and now, there's a waiting now, list. now there's a waiting list. Yeah, it's yeah, so. crazy. It's definitely a heck of a facility. Best marina. I, I mean, I've been to Los Buenos and I've seen Cap Can. I've seen a bunch of other marinas. That, that definitely the facilities and the service. There's nothing like that in the world. I don't. Yeah. I, that I know of, you know, haul out slip and. Atlantic tackle where you can outfit a whole boat by yeah. bait. I mean, it's just a caterpillar dealership right across, you know, you got Carter cat right there. Yeah. And then the staff, you know, everyone's so, you know, all the dock hands and, and then you got the restaurant and then you got the tiki bar, you know, teasers, yeah. you got the nightlife. I mean, it's definitely a, it's a special place in the summer, man. That's for sure. Definitely is a cool spot. Very like you're going to have to come up, man. Yeah, man. I think you got to come up. I bet I, I, I I did one. I did three. The three tournaments up there a long time ago, but haven't been up what, since. What boat was that on? Uh, the hands off with that kid Paul Sadell. He used to fish on the Crazy Salts. That was a while ago. I went to college with him. I got you. It's cool up there. You never know what you're gonna catch. You know, you can get like a 
duffy-sized marlin or big uh-huh. eye, you know, or yellowfin, white marlin. I mean, it's pretty – I mean, growing up in South Florida, you know, we got like these little baby gaffs or something like that. You know, I never really needed to have like flying gaffs <laughs> ready or, you know, yeah. fish 130s or something like that. You know, it's pretty cool. You go out to the canyons and just really never know what seems. They never eat the right bait, though. No, yeah, no. They always want to come up on the dink pole. Yeah. Always. <laughs> At least from my experience. Yep. Definitely. Oh, you have you heard about this uh, glitter bombing thing that's going on? No, nah, I have heard legends of people in splash wells putting glitter. You know, <laughs> splash well is a an in deck well with holes through the hull. And I have heard years ago. I don't want to name any names, but I have heard of yes, I I, I have heard. Of, I don't know how effective it is, but um, I have heard. And then I, I've heard Ocean City as well, and as in chunking for the tunas, I've heard of people mixing plastic glitter in with their chunks of sardines or whatever to get the, the fish up well i from what i hear i guess it's i mean i kind of just found out about this and i guess there's some people doing it and i've already had a talk with brick running the jj that it's not going to be allowed and you know now i'm hoping to talk to jamie and hopefully jamie's on board with it yeah i just don't think it's good i mean you got all this plot you got so much trash in the ocean like you're all, they're making all this big deal about the microplastics and you're gonna dump a bunch of glitter in the water like i don't yeah so uh, this is a this is a real fucking thing going on down there oh no no, no. i've heard of people in ocean <laughs> city and in florida I, I heard about it in florida like 10 years ago and then i i heard about it um like i said i don't want to name any names but oh, yeah. I, I know yeah i know some people that have it, but at the end of the day is i, I don't I, I these don't guys win in there anthony so what from what i've just you know i've recently come across some some disturbing news that pissed me off um uh, and i'm yeah i'm not happy about it but some from what i hear they're making frozen ice balls with glitter inside and they they throw one over or throw a few over and you know obviously as the ice ball melts the glitter gets released and creates some sort of sardine ball glitter so the, scale, you know, slick going down. Huh? So, but do the, does it attract bait fish or just regular, just sales or like the, the fish you're trying to catch? You know, I guess it's mimicking like sales balling up a ball of sardines, you know? Yeah. And, huh. and I guess that, you know, maybe it, it, it does create, it's, it's almost like, fish. it's almost like chumming. Is what you're that, well that's to me what it is it's like yeah. a, it's like a gray it's a gray area, area of of chumming which you know we're not a lot of chum so and then also you're polluting so it's like yeah yeah that's what i think the bigger part of it is you're throwing how much glitter you're throwing i mean that's just yeah so i didn't I, I didn't know if they you could like pull up on a on a certain spot with some and mark some bait and then throw out the glitter and then have sardines or whatever come come swim behind your boat and then you just got a bait ball behind the boat that yeah. would be and oh, then the sardines would, sardines would eat the glitter and that's not good <laughs> now like nick said you know when you get a ball of bait going and then you get a feeding frenzy i've seen in ocean city too on the sardines what you see is just a freaking thing of scales going yeah. out underneath you know so the fish are yeah. just they're, they're ingrained with that so as soon as they see that coming down the water column they're, they're going to follow that up and then look at your at your baits you know I, I could see it being an advantage for sure but absolutely definitely not not a fair one but yeah. it, there's a gray there's a definitely gray area when it comes to basically you're basically chumming without chum correct that's what you kind of as far as a competitive thing not 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 say they're leaving leaving behind the that you're actually just throwing plastic into the ocean um from a competitive thing, it's you're basically chumming without. Yeah, and, I, without I, and like Raul said, I absolutely think it it is an you're create you're giving yourself an edge over other boats because you're creating that sardine fucking ball when sails or white marlin are balling them up. When you like you said, yeah. Raul, when you look at that from the tower or bridge, it, it literally looks like already a glitter ball already. So it's your yeah, and that's what you're creating. You know, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Artificial bait ball. Wow. Interesting. It's sad how, you know, people, I mean, there's different things you can do to get an edge, you know, within, within the rules, you know, but that, that, that does just doesn't, I mean, like I was saying earlier, we make a living off the ocean, you know, why would you want to be putting all that into the ocean? Yeah. 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 Doesn't make sense. 
sad. It's fascinating. It's like uh, trolling around with a dead tinker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought a glitter bomb was something said somebody didn't like. They open up in their house and it makes a big mess inside. That was news to me. Yeah. Uh, you what that? was that? I, uh, glitter bomb. I thought you'd go online, you order a glitter bomb, send it to somebody, they open the pack. I thought the house, the glitter explodes everywhere, they got a mess. When, <laughs> yeah, when Nick. When Nick was saying that, I just thought it was some like prank that was going around the yeah. docks down there. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I stay out of the drama. Like I said, I, I knew it was South Florida captain that had done that a while back. I don't know if he still did it, and he, I, I'm pretty sure he didn't have much success with it. And then I knew of a of a private boat in Ocean City that also did that in huh. chunking, chunking for yellowfin tuna. And uh, huh. yeah, I, I've I've heard of it, but I would have never thought about you know, trying to use it in a tournament. I mean, I wouldn't, that's just interesting, but yeah. I could, I could see why it would annoy people, you know, or it's definitely a, I could see why somebody would try it and I could see why other people would be pissed off about that person or that group of people trying it. Cause it, it's a fucking gray area, you know, there's a market trying to exploit that gray glitter. area. Oh, there you go. Buy a degradable glitter. Yeah. But it can't Say, be. Hey, I don't need, we don't need to give any <laughs> ideas out. <laughs> Always thinking here. <laughs> Easy, easy. Yeah, you're not going. It's not jump. Yeah. I thought you're on my side with this. <laughs> got to think of life after fishing, man. You gotta... <laughs> <laughs> there won't be any more fishing if we just keep on throwing glitter in the and the yeah, right? sardines eat them. Well, according to Bubba Carter, there is no life outside of fishing. So, <laughs> <laughs> super it's, duper crazy. Super duper crazy. <laughs> That guy is a legend, man. He's a legend. That was a good one. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. start logging my billfish till I met him. And I, I met him once in uh, St. Thomas and he started spitting off how many thousand was sailfish. I'm like, wow, like, are you kidding me? And then I was like, well, maybe I should really start writing this all down. Yeah, it's amazing never, how much he's written down. Yeah, I've never been one to write down because I just get. I just get frustrated at how many more that everybody else <laughs> now now that there's really like I can go back and see how many more everybody caught than me. So I just <laughs> I was always thinking of, of the next one, you know. I was always worried about trying to get the next bite, the next bite, you know, but yeah. But yeah, no, he's you can't can't and in all the different boats he's had and the different venues he's he's fished out of for Venezuela, Costa Rica, the crew. He's definitely the man. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Um awesome. So something me and Anthony always ask, uh, and both uh, we know both you guys are got badass stories, great, great fishermen. What uh, you know, one of you or both you, both you go take turns. You know, tell us, you know, one of your most memorable, just experiences. Doesn't have to be a tournament, but just yeah, it definitely doesn't have to be the third time you won a million dollars or something like that. Role. <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, just most memorable, uh, you know, fishing experience. Mine, I was probably like. 14 years old and would have this 27 uh, foot center console and we were selling it. It was the last day we had it. So we went out fishing at Concrete. Everyone was Ballyhoo fishing. There's a local tournament going on that didn't exist anymore. Two day tournament and uh, fishing two. We only had three rods, caught a couple triples, ended up burning a rod off on a buoy, got down to two rods. Me and my dad caught a 17 sales by uh, like one o'clock. Had to go wow. in. The people were getting to come look at the boat. And <laughs> I think the two day tournament, the winning boat caught like six. No, it's nice. like it's like it meant to be. Just me and him in the middle of everybody. People like call my buddies, like come here and try. They're like they're not fighting for us. And, yeah, one of the most days that I've still ever caught. Went three that's, rods, me and my father. Pretty wild. Yeah, that's, that's a special sick. day there, man. I think my most memorable was uh, was on the lights out. One of those white. It was uh, the Mid Atlantic and Jeffrey Lederman. It was uh, 2013. It was our first summer up there, and Jeffrey had never fished in the canyons. And it was our first day of fishing the Mid-Atlantic. It was day two of the tournament. And Bill Hoglin on the lights out would make this big lunch, you know. So everybody would go inside to eat lunch. So, you know, everybody holds a rod, you know. So Jeff was like, well, let's just lock up these reels and eat lunch. I was like, no, 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 no. We got to – I learned from Backlash, you know, and, and his his boss at the time, and on the give it away – you know, you got to hold your, your line. You got to beat the fish to the bait, you know, feel the bait. And so Jeff ate first and then it was my turn to eat. And he, like I said, he hadn't, he had never fished in the freaking canyon. All right. So I'm eating my steak. I'm like, I know something's going to happen. And sure as heck, I look up 
And just how I explained to him, I was like, you want to feed it to the – he's feeding it to the clip, and then he comes tight, and this thing's so fat, it couldn't get out of the water, all right? It was just sitting there in, in the middle of the spread. And then Chester's like, you want to clear everything? I was like, yeah, yeah, we should, we should clear everything. And we, we fought that fish, handed it off to Bill Hogland, and then fought that fish for two hours. And uh, we gaffed it, put it in the boat, and it was 84 pounds. And I was like, Jeff, do you know what you just did? He's like, what? what? I'm like, freaking 84 pound line marlin. And yeah, we, that was the only one we actually, we, we were very blessed and won a lot of money there. But that was the one tournament we won was the Mid-Atlantic in, in 2013. And it was Jeffrey's first canyon trip. And like I said, I'll, I'll never forget eating my steak and then looking up and watching him feed. I'm like, you got no way. Like, there's no way. And then coming tight and it just being that fish. And the first day of the tournament, it was just wow. it was pretty, pretty wild. I love it when you know it's the fucking one and you can just, oh, yeah. like, just clear your. Sh- and we have that. My, like, I was telling Nick before the podcast, my uncle gets jacked up. Everyone's the one. Like, my uncle's been everywhere, caught I don't know how many fish, but he's always the one to get completely jacked up. And then the one when we won the Mid Atlantic was. With like you, it jumped out of the water and it, like it, it could only get its head out of the water the yep. first time. And I was like, that's everybody was like, that's the fucking one. You know, I like, I like when that's amazing when you get that one, there's no debate. There's just, just gaff it and hope for the best. We had a similar one in the Jimmy Johnson and that we, we, we won second place, but it was like when it jumped out of the water, we knew it was like the one that's kind of a good feeling. Good, definitely it is. It, it's pretty crazy the tournament up there. The first year I went up there, it was like Chester's like, all right, we just gotta gotta catch one. I was used to sail fishing and stuff. I'm like, wait a minute, we just gotta catch one fish? Yeah. He's like, for like a million dollars, like that's it. I'm like, Cap, I'm gonna try so hard for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's kind of what, but I hate, I hate, I, I love those tournaments because they're such, they're like huge events. You know, we're it's scope cool that we're all docked there at sunset but on the other hand like you could win that fucking tournament by accident oh you know? yeah like not not that you guys did because you guys were a great group but you know you've been you know you could win a million dollars by like have that one bite all what's that's yeah. what's great and was sucky about it you know like somebody has one bite in three days and they're like oh look a 90 pound well, white marlin i, I think that's that the home. biggest i think that's the biggest advantage what that those two tournaments have oh yeah for sure yeah is that's why they have 300 boats. Now, when you go yeah, to yeah. South Florida and you have a seven-line tournament, you know, the average Joe, they know they don't have a chance. You know yeah. what I mean? So you're never going to get that turnout. That Key West tournament that Chris King used to have, it was a four-line tournament. You had more boats from the Gulf. You know, people feel like they have a chance yeah. with the four lines, you know. But as soon as you well, put seven lines and – Oh, you heard you, you heard it here for you heard it here everybody if you fish a seven line tournament against the bar south in the showtime you have no <laughs> chance no not that <laughs> I didn't say that. but that, that's why people are like well why are these tournament, <laughs> tournaments as big as the the tournaments in the mid atlantic and and, yeah. and and that's what it comes down to you know it's it's yeah, it's definitely very competitive second. yeah yeah, chance yeah. we we won second place in the white marlin open last year and everybody's like how much did you win and when it was like like it was like thirty five thousand dollars and i was like jacked up because i'd always wanted to be top boat because if you look at the group the the people that are top boat in that tournament and it's like bayless duffy spencers ryan higgins like all my all the guys i looked up to in that region and i was like so close and everybody's like well you didn't win any money or didn't win that much money it's not that big of a deal and i was like well it's still a fucking big deal you Absolutely. Know? but but it's still kind of in those tournaments it's kind of like if you didn't win a million dollars you're obviously just an asshole so. <laughs> you definitely uh definitely uh it's it's a big extreme for sure but there's nowhere yeah. else you can you know have a one in 300 chance of winning you know life life changing money yeah. yeah yeah what was it this year what what they went on the on the sushi was it three million three points it was something Great. i mean the guys this and the bill fisher won a pile of money with their blue marlin too <sighs> Brand new boat. Yeah, I'm gonna build a boat. I'm gonna test it out and catch a grander. I think it works. It's crazy. <laughs> now Duffy's Duffy's is awesome, man. He's definitely put in his time and it's definitely great that it's another what makes Sunset so great is now having him him there with all the guys there. You know, you need something done, it, it gets done. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Oh, they did a first cloud job. I was a little nervous putting the sonar in our boat. I'm like, you want to drill a hole through our keel, like right through the backbone of the boat. But they they did it for us, and they did a, an amazing job. And I can't say enough about 
Duffy's guys there. They've been very helpful for sure. Do you know how many boats anybody in that Costa Rica, that Pelagic tournament that these guys just won all that money? 70. I think there were 70 or 70. I'd say somewhere between 70 and 80. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it was like that. But that's a, that's, you know, that's a big payout, man. That's sick. I mean, I wonder what the across the board was in that. I think it was like 25 or something like that. To have that sort of money in a numbers tournament, I think is, is cool. You know, you actually, you know, you actually give the the biggest prize to the best boat, which I think is cool, which like in the, like I said, in Ocean City, we don't, we don't get that. And that's a lot of money for a tournament like that. For release. release Yeah. And Eddie Wheeler came in second, would still won three hundred. Yeah, mean, yeah, it's fucking badass. Well, he won it last year, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he did win it last year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they had Crazy. some talent on that boat for that tournament. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah that's yeah. a special place. I, that was definitely cool fishing there. You know, seeing the sailfish. Like I used to fishing and seeing them free jumping or tailing, but to see them with like their hair out, just sitting on the surface, <laughs> slick calm. It's a whole it's different like, world down there. Right? Blue Marlin fishing there is incredible right now. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that I mean, in that past tournament, those guys caught what, like, fifteen fish or something? Yeah, fifteen. I think that I heard that from somebody the Tar Heel caught uh caught fourteen blues in a day over there. Wow, which is pretty sick. So, pretty cool if you're into that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see any uh, stuff about a uh, salty fair boat, James? Oh Turner? my goodness! Incredible. Yeah, that's. What are they, Shay? I mean, you've been down there a lot, like Shay. What? You've been down there a lot. He's the president. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to the president of DR like that. You take it serious, and they fish hard. They yeah, fish hard, and that's what we do. Yeah, go all day. Yeah, it's they've been just, there for years. They were there for years before on their old boat I, back, and they spent a lot of time there. Yeah, I love that. I think what's so cool about the DR is you can, you can, I, I know that you can have good fishing off the moon, but you can kind of, those guys have proved that you can fucking fish on the moon and kind of just like if, like for owners that have a certain, want to set aside a certain day, it's almost pretty, pretty much like clockwork. Yeah. Those guys will probably catch a uh, fish on the side of the road on the ditch too. Tomorrow. Yeah. That's probably they got true. Good, pretty good there. Yeah. What, uh, Shay, well, that, well, that is that. It's not like common. It's not common for that fishing in in Cap Cana to keep on going past this month, is it? Um, they've had good fishing through February there. Now we got a lot more fads. We got some any storms to take the fads away. But it's not really fish. Like, there's only a couple boats fishing there now. It's not a kind of a new fishery this time of year there. So, do you think might that might have been there? This, this fads are newer. You know, it might have been there for a uh, long period of time, and no one tried it either. Yeah, yeah. Combination of there's more fads there for a long time keeps those fish around. Hard to say, but. I got you. A couple of years now, there's been good fishing there. Do you think it like? Do you think it, it? Do you think it's worth it to go around the Casa de Campo, or do you do you think this stuff is gonna to keep on going like in the March and April? I want to see a reason to leave until it stops there. It's been so good. So yeah, long yeah. I think last year they left too, and Casa de Campo has good fishing also, but that's a hard fishery to leave right now. Yeah, that's that's for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to. We're trying to figure things out. Maybe go there. So it's kind of why I was asking. They're so, close too, so you can go to one if it's not working out for the other. But that's a gotcha. good good marina too. Good fit, good people. Just send your paperwork over to Shay Anthony, and he'll get you. <laughs> I'll just yeah, I'll just call the president and have him yeah. let him know we're coming. Yeah. Let me know yeah, where to send the checks. Call the marina there. Those people help with anything, man. Those, those are really nice. We have all the facilities as far as helpfulness. That that place top of the line yeah. to help. Do anything yeah. for you. I think dollar to billfish though. I don't think there's a better deal in the world. I mean, dollar to blue more. There's nowhere else you can, you know, the first fat 16 miles from the end. You know, there's nowhere yeah. else you could be blue marlin fishing. It. Yeah, there you go. Besides know. Hawaii, but you're not going to get 10, 15 shots. Yeah, you got a direct flight, two hours, yeah. get to the airport, go to the really nice grocery store, pull in the marina within 15 minutes of landing, and catch a blue marlin that afternoon. And pretty awesome. Yeah, so special place. You're taking the blood money? I think we, uh, I'm, I think we're leaning that direction. So, yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Be nice to go get some fishing in before the Ocean City season. So, you guys have Something. Brian on the show. Brian just talked with you guys. He's very familiar with that fishing. Yeah, guy. yeah. I've, I've been talking to Brian a lot. So, he's, he's a really good person that people he fish with, too. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, you need guy. a translator. Yeah. Let me know. <laughs> my, my Spanish is pretty decent. So, I don't, I will say the Spanish in the Caribbean is different than the Spanish I'm used to speaking. So, yeah, I'm but. sure it is. Guantes <laughs> <laughs> and Bamas. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> that's it so, oh man well, awesome guys thank you man it was cool. fun um, thank you fellas thank you for having us
Yeah. Raul Gonzalez, Shay Dancic, check them out. Uh, easy. Reagan, if you guys haven't checked them out. Thanks, you have guys. no chance.